Okay, we'll just start here. This is our grand composite animation. Which is an animation of what we're calling the short gain and awareness one version, which sounds like this. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing for the New Era, Part 7, Learning Exercises. In today's episode, which had three chapters, our reflection was we started using the word short as prefix to a version because this one was, I don't know, 33% longer, but to animate it, we had to shorten it and we didn't want to call it number two or whatever. So it seemed to be a useful way to do that. Um, uh, we did a whole lot of stuff. And what we're going to do is just walk you through this entire set of results that we did in this episode. So the first thing is that we completed gain in awareness one, which is constructed from one of our custom scales, pentatonic parallel, uh, five, five, six, blah, 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 blah. And we cherry picked some cadences and then we animated it. So let's play for you this animation. So we won't play the whole thing. But what is cool about this animation is that we built it up from uh, 11 separate scenes, like a rotating stick, uh, putting the sticks together, having two versions of the sticks, and finally ending up as what you saw a, um, I don't even know how I'm going to get back over there. How do I get back over there? this thing where there's kind of a wide pair of sticks and a narrow pair of sticks they're all colored and we actually had a, a conceptual drawing for for these parts and this is the the idea of gain and awareness is you see every time you hear a sound things are expanding and then going back to normal now i guess to complete the metaphor we'd want it to I don't know, stay expanded. But anyway, that was our first shot at it. So then, after all that, we started a number two score like this. And what we wanted to do here was uh, add kind of a, a new backbone. So this started out like this. That was the original way octaves ran. But then we revoiced the octaves to go like this. Then, then we added some uh, tempo dorking around like this. So we were kind of working all that, and our theme is learning exercises, and. Um, we don't consider two finished, or at least we haven't done an animation for it. But then what happened is that we had been on a tour and we wanted to put some music with the, the, the virtual reality tour. So we revisited a previous work, so previous, it was like several years ago, which sounded like this.
and we did. So we took a bunch of screenshots and we uh, added the music at the beginning. And, well, actually, we used the music to accompany all the screenshots. So that looks like this. We'll play this for you. Let's see if we can remember how to drag this down. Yeah, yeah like that. Here we go. And so basically we repeated that because it was uh, a lot of screenshots. So then what happened was that in revisiting uh, that composition, which used a custom hexatonic scale, we decided to go back and look at that scale, which at the time had 28 chords, but we now know they're supposed to be 35 chords. So we went back and uh, in this session found all the missing chords and put them in there. There they are. So now this has all the chords, and then we started gaining Awareness 3, where the idea is to use this custom scale, and this is as far as we've gotten with this one. So it's not even as far along as number two, which is still in progress. But we we added our new techniques. We revoiced the chords to go out of the octave. These are going outside of the a C5 and up. And then what we're calling perceived falls, like you go from here. Even though this is on a root G and this is a root A flat. La, La, la. But the top is sounds like it's falling. Da, da. So we learned a bunch from that. So then what happened? Then what happened is we also worked some more with our key step MIDI controller and uh, tried two more experiments. So the first set here is where we just set it on it. We put some notes into the sequencer and then we put muse score on record and let you know hands off you know let the midi controller pump in some notes and then we went to live play as input so you'll hear these two differences here here we go So those are program sequences. Now here's the live play. And what we like about that is taking something we had worked out to play manually with our hand, manos, and um, record it into a score. That's the first time we've recorded it and scored it. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then, and then we went, we're still kind of learning exercises. So we said, gee, we worked with the pentatonic parallel that was gaining awareness. Then we worked with the custom O2, which was the oriental sounding music. And then we said, well, we were going to make a shadow scale which is a technique we've done in earlier series. So the, the idea of the shadow scale is you take all 12 tones and call that the sun, and you shine them down through the scale. So where 
there's a C, the C gets blocked and the, and the, the D shines all the way through to the bottom. And then here F shines all the way, see, all the way through. There's nothing blocking the F. But, like here, uh, you see they're all getting blocked. So we took all, we, we, and, we had the, and we had this custom seven note scale that we started working with in the last series. And then we kind of halted there. We didn't know what to do with it. So we said, we'll throw it in there. So this is the first time we've ever done what we call a triple shadow constructed scale, which is there are three notes, C, E flat, A, that are blocked, and then two notes, D and F, that are allowed through. So we spent the rest of today's chapter constructing a uh, tetratonic, it means four note parallel scale system, four note minor, four note major, and add them up, you get five. Figured out all the chords using our state of the art enumeration techniques <laughs> in this series and the last. And Assign them note functions and chord functions, and there are no urge notes in this. Uh, uh, they're all, uh, so they're tonics and subdominants. And now we have a thing to work with here. So what we're going to do for you is going to play this one in its entirety, and that will bring us home. So this is the uh, premiere of the triple shadow scale four note minor, four note major, and um, five note total, and ten chords. Here we go. What we like about it is it's simple. It actually uh, uh, it surprised us putting this together. Uh, for example, the A reflects to itself, and um, that uh, we don't. And we also now we have defined what an asymmetric scale means. It's if you have different number of notes on top than you do on the bottom. For here we have five notes on top, and here we have six notes on the bottom, and one note's kind of on the line of reflection. But this didn't have the same misbehavior that the hexatonic scale had. The hexatonic scale had all kind of, uh, it had a note that there was no reflection for, so you couldn't perfectly reflect all the notes. Here, all the notes were perfectly reflected with the fun fact that two of the chords reflect to themselves. You know, we're music nerds, what we can say. So, that concludes this episode. Um, our ideas for next time are to review scores one and, or two and three and develop them further. We still want to, that gain in awareness. Um, uh, uh, that custom hexatonic, we did program it into the key step MIDI controller, but it wasn't as useful to do that as we thought, to noodle. So, we, we think we'd should do a 3D piano kit for that. Uh, and then look at this scale we just played for you and maybe make a trial score. And maybe maybe that would be amenable to program it in Q-Step. Anyway, play with Q-Step some more. So, um, and we should add this to our master checklist of scales that we're adding. Shout outs to Miss Cleo and Silent Lurker. We appreciate you. Tune in next time to see what happens. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming.